most fossils tell a familiar story. A dinosaur, a fish, maybe a plant. But every now and then we dig up something so strange it doesn't fit anywhere. No family, no name, just questions. Today we explore fossils so bizarre they've baffled science for decades. Real creatures, real mysteries, and we still don't know what they were. Ready to dive in? Becoming a fossil is almost impossible. Most life disappears without a trace. And yet we've uncovered thousands of fossils, most of them familiar. But a few are so strange, so alien, that scientists still don't know what they are. Becoming a fossil is like winning the evolutionary lottery, but backwards. The odds are so low that most living things vanish without a trace. And yet Earth has preserved the remains of countless ancient creatures. With life constantly rising and fading, it's no wonder we've unearthed a mountain of fossils and built entire industries around them. But here's the twist. Most fossils we find are predictable. Even new species often resemble familiar ones, like another duck-billed dinosaur. True surprises are rare. Still, once in a while, scientists stumble upon something so strange, so alien, that it leaves them baffled for decades. A perfect example, the Tully Monster. Discovered in 1966 in Illinois' Mason Creek Formation, this bizarre creature looked like nothing else. Its long, soft body resembled a cigar. It had triangular fins, stalks with eyes at the ends, and a stout-like trunk with a circular mouth. It looked like a science fiction nightmare, only about 14 inches long, but creepy enough to captivate scientists worldwide. Was it a worm? A mollusk? An arthropod? Maybe a vertebrate? No one could agree. The only consensus was that it lived in water, back when Illinois was a shallow tropical sea. The Tully monster likely swam freely, drifting through murky currents and sometimes washing ashore, which may explain why fossils appear in clusters. And even after 90 years of study, we still don't know exactly what it was. All we've determined is that it belonged to a vast group called bilaterians, which includes almost every animal from worms to humans. That doesn't narrow it down much. It probably hunted in the water column, using its strange mouth to snatch prey in muddy waters. But beyond that, it remains an evolutionary enigma, and it's far from the only one. The alien goldfish, Typhlosis from Montana. In the 1970s, paleontologists uncovered another mystery, this time in Montana's Bear Gulch limestone. It was a tiny, tail-ended creature so strange it was nicknamed the alien goldfish. Its real name is Typhlosis, and it dates back 330 million years, even older than the Tully monster. But unlike most fossils, this one wasn't immediately celebrated. It was so confusing that scientists avoided publishing it for years. Typhlosis had a spindle-shaped body, no limbs, no fins, no visible gut, and no exit for digestion. Inside, it had a unique iron-rich organ, the ferrodiscus, an internal structure that concentrated iron for reasons no one understands. Initially, scientists tried to group it with conodonts, ancient jawless vertebrates. That idea gained traction when one fossil appeared to have conodont-like teeth, but a closer look revealed the teeth weren't part of typhlosis. They were inside its stomach, remains of a recent meal. So, it wasn't a conodont, but it was a carnivore, that much was clear. For nearly three decades, that's all we knew. Then in 2022, a new theory emerged. Typhlosis might have been a mollusk. Why? Scientists found a strange feeding structure deep inside the fossil, a tongue with tooth-like projections, similar to a radula. The rasping tongue many modern mollusks used to feed it was a bold connection. But radula-like structures have evolved independently in non-mollusks, too. So while typhlosis might look mollusk-like, it might be something completely different. To this day, Typhlosis remains unclassified, a soft-bodied predator with an iron disc and a mystery tongue. And like the Tully monster, it doesn't fit anywhere in the tree of life. And we're just getting started. A tree made of flesh, Namacalithus. To find something even stranger, we go farther back, into the Ediacaran period, over 600 million years ago. This was Earth's first great age of visible life, long before dinosaurs, trilobites, or even shells existed. And among its strangest creatures was Namacalithus a fossil that looked like a fleshy tree with a skeleton. When first discovered, Namacalophus was mistaken for a plant or a coral. It had a hollow stalk and a bulbous top with a wide opening. But scientists soon realized the trunk was calcified, meaning it had a mineralized skeleton. It wasn't a plant at all. It was an animal. Then it got creepier. New fossils showed its body was covered in tentacles and spines, likely used to capture or shred prey. Even more unsettling, its surface was dotted with windows. Open holes filled with soft organic matter when alive. These came in bizarre shapes, circles, hearts, crescents, hexagons, and even heptagons. 
and as if that weren't enough, Acalophus could adjust its size to its environment. It lived in various marine settings but clearly preferred the abyssal plains deep below the ocean's surface. So what was it? Some have compared it to a coral gone wrong, but even that is inaccurate. A detailed study concluded that Namacalophus was too complex to be a coral. It doesn't belong to any known group. Yet another fossil that's clearly alive, clearly animal, but totally unclassifiable. The Living Rugs, Dickinsonia and the Proarticulata. If a tree made of flesh wasn't odd enough, let's talk about creatures that looked like bath mats and actually moved. During the Ediacaran period, Earth was home to strange, flattened organisms with ribbed bodies pressed against the seafloor. The most iconic is Dickinsonia, a soft, oval-shaped creature with segmented lines across its body. It looked like a loofah or something you'd step on after a shower, except it was alive. It could move across the seabed, but no one knows how. It had no limbs, no eyes, no obvious organs. Even its identity was debated. Was it a plant, a fungus, or an animal? Dickinsonia wasn't alone. Other similar creatures included Spragina, Vindia, and Yorgia. Because they shared certain features, scientists grouped them under a proposed category called Proarticulata, but defining the group hasn't been easy. They left behind plenty of fossils, but they don't resemble any modern animals. At first glance, their bodies seem symmetrical, but a closer look reveals that one side is slightly offset, a form of asymmetry unknown in today's species. Their lifestyles are also a mystery. We don't know how they moved, what they ate, or how they reproduced, and they probably didn't leave any descendants. If that's true, they were evolutionary dead ends, life's early experiments that ultimately didn't go anywhere. Fossils or not? The Francivillian biota. Now let's go even deeper in time, not millions, but billions of years in the past, to the Riacian period over 2.1 billion years ago. In Gabon, West Africa, geologists found a vast deposit of black shale filled with puzzling structures, some disc-shaped, others tubular, or flower-like. These fossils, known as the Francivillian biota, are so old that they predate all previously known multicellular life by more than 400 million years. Scientists who first studied them proposed a radical idea. Maybe these were colonial, multicellular organisms, possibly even eukaryotes, complex cells like those in animals and plants, that would rewrite everything that we thought we knew about life's timeline. But critics weren't convinced. Some argued the structures were the result of geological processes like mineral buildup or diagenesis, not biology. Essentially, that they weren't fossils at all, just chemical flukes. Still, newer studies began to tip the balance. Some of the Francivillian forms were rich in zinc, a possible byproduct of biological metabolism. And in 2023, researchers found that the ancient Delta environment had all the ingredients necessary for life. If these structures really were alive, they probably floated in the water like primitive plankton, drifting through shallow, hot, coastal waters. But even now, we're not certain whether we're looking at life or just a very old illusion of it. Shrimp? Squid? Something else. The mystery of Nectacaris. Not all mysterious fossils are unrecognizable blobs. Some look oddly familiar, like Nectacaris, discovered in 1910 in Canada's Burgess Shale. At first, it seemed like a stretched out shrimp long and narrow, with odd fins. It was left unclassified for decades until 2010, when over 90 new specimens were found much better preserved. And what they showed was astonishing. Nectacaris wasn't a shrimp. It had a kite-shaped body, stalked eyes, two tentacles, and a large reversible proboscis, a muscular tube that could turn inside out. It had no mouth, no jaws, just this strange feeding funnel. Some scientists proposed it was the earliest known cephalopod, ancestor of squids and octopuses, and 30 million years older than any other member of the group. But that idea fell apart quickly. Nectacaris didn't match what we know about cephalopod evolution. Its features were too advanced, too early. It was like finding a modern car in the ruins of a Roman villa. Impressive, but completely out of place. So once again, we're left with an unclassifiable animal. And in 2019, a similar fossil was found and named Nectacotus, forming a small mysterious family, the Nectacaridids. We don't know what they were, but they hint at a completely lost branch of ocean life, the shadow lineage that may reshape our understanding of how complex animals evolved. From stalk-shaped monsters and iron-tongued blobs to bath mats that moved, the fossil record is filled with creatures that don't make sense. Not every fossil fits in a neat diagram. Some challenge everything we thought we knew. Others seem to come from alien worlds, deep oceans, ancient deltas or eras long before animal life as we know it. And maybe that's the real story. Evolution isn't a straight path, it's a wild experiment, repeated over billions of years, with twists, dead ends, and puzzles that we still haven't solved. So next time you look at a fossil, remember, it might not be just a relic of the past. 
It might be a question that Earth still hasn't answered. Which of these creatures do you think was the strangest? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the journey into Earth's weirdest past, give us a like, subscribe for more science stories, and stay curious, because there's so much more waiting to be discovered.